conflict of interest in your giving paid speeches into the run-up of your announcement that you're running for president? The answer to the second is no. And the answer to the first is I have said repeatedly, I want those emails out. Nobody has uh, a bigger interest in getting them released than I do. I respect the State Department. They have their process that they do for everybody, not just for me. But anything that they might do to expedite that process, I heartily support. <laughs> Because these are the email these are the emails that I picked out. Of course I want them released, you foolish Americans. Roger Simon uh, is with us, PJ Media, award-winning novelist, and of course uh, now a member of the PJ Media Diary of a Mad Voter series. Um, all right, um, uh, uh, Roger, uh, you know this little performance yesterday was uh, obviously well rehearsed, but how <laughs> foolish! How foolish! Of course she wants uh -huh. those emails released. I mean, listening to it being rape, replayed on your show, I said, is that Saturday Night Live? <laughs> <laughs> well, well they, did a, they did a job on her as well uh, with the summertime thing that we did yesterday here. We showed it. Right. But anyway, so, so, you know, let's talk, though, about, uh, and, and one of the questioners asked a very generic, poor question regarding Sidney Blumenthal. Oh, which, which, she, which really should have fired at her in a, more, in a more direct way, a more accusatory way, in a more specific way, and enabled her to say, I have lots of old friends. So talk about, uh, you wrote a piece, Watergate Redux, Will Sid Vicious Upend Hillary? That's true. Well, you know, I knew, I knew Sid, Sid Vicious Blumenthal back in the day, and I would say if I were going to be a mafia chieftain, he'd be my guy. <laughs> and why, why so? Well, he'd be my consigliere because right. he is unfailingly loyal. I mean, you could be a pederast murderer and he'd be on your team once he was on it. <laughs> on the other hand, th for the same reasons, he's just as evil as it gets. And, uh, you know, if you read all the, the details so far that we have, and that we don't have anywhere near what we could eventually have, he had operations going in Libya from which he was going to make money in cahoots with Hillary, essentially. I mean, she knew bloody well what was going on. He was setting up exploitation of Libya after Hillary and Obama arranged for the great freedom of Libya that we now know uh, has taken place with ISIS lopping off Christian heads by the seaside. But not only <laughs> that, that, Roger, this was after the Obama administration banned him from working for the State Department that she had this relationship with him on her, by the way, private email. Yeah, they, uh, absolutely. I mean, he, they knew he was a loose cannon and dangerous. That doesn't mean they don't have their own dangerous loose cannons. But they, this they knew was Hillary. You know, there's no law, love lost between the Clintons and the Obamas. We all know that. Yeah, wow. And they, they don't, I mean, this is like Medici families. They all hate each other. I mean, everything you want to learn in life, you can find out in The Godfather. <laughs> I mean, it's keep your friends close, your enemies close. That's why Hillary was the Secretary of State. No, that's essentially. It. That's probably. And, it. and you know, uh, so they knew that Blumenthal was her guy. It's too dangerous. All right, let's talk about another piece that you wrote um, uh, that came out uh, today, and that is Nation Building, the big phony taboo of the uh, 2016 elections. Yeah, well, I know all the Republicans are being grilled about about whether they d would have done something in Iraq back when in the day and blah, blah, blah. Well, and the idea is that nation building is a big taboo. We should never, thou shalt never nation build. <laughs> On the other hand, excuse me, excuse the French, because the United States has done a great job when it wanted to of nation building. You've heard of Nazi Germany. You've heard of Hirohito's Japan. These are now a very vibrant democracies, thanks to us and our nation building. Not to mention South Korea. If you happen to be watching this show on a Samsung television, <laughs> you'll know where they're at. And, and, and those people, we also nation built for quite effectively, so they wouldn't have to end up like their friends in the North who eat bark to survive in a totalitarian dictatorship the likes of which has never existed. So we built the nations of South Korea, Germany, and Japan. We didn't do it. We didn't go to the mattress in, in Iraq or Afghanistan because nation building takes really confident belief in yourself, and you have to go all the way. You have to firebomb 
Dresden, you have to drop a bomb on Hiroshima. That's the sad truth. That's how nation bombing works. We're not able to do that anymore. We don't have the guts. No, well, you're absolutely uh, right. I mean, I had I had Mike Morell on earlier, and I and I you know I asked him about uh, why we just didn't drop bombs on the convoys of ISIS fighters celebrating their Ramadi victory, and he said, well, we might hurt women and children. And I said to him, we never could have won World War II that way. Uh, and exactly. it's, it, it, really, it really is sad. Roger, great to talk to you. Go to pjmedia.com, check out Diary of a Mad Voter, and of course, Roger's other stories, which have been referenced here today, at least the most recent ones. Uh, thanks, Roger. Give me five is next, folks. You're not going to want to miss this one, I promise you, on the Steve Malsberg Show.